eight lucky winners of the Totally Awesome Fishing Show competition line up for a day cycling the hospitality of Hampshire's Church Paddock Fishery. As soon as they arrived, the breakfast was ready and instructions of the day were given by Eddie and Jamie who run this popular day ticket fishery. It was a day of instruction where beginners and experienced alike could pick up some of those totally awesome fishing tips from top instructor Eddie, a mine of information on flies to use, places to cast, and tackle to use. Our day was perfect as far as weather goes, with the gin clear water allowing all the anglers to spot the various species of trout that were cruising. Everyone was keen to get a fly line out on the water but nobody wanted to miss out on any fly fishing tips. And for those anxious to brush up on their casting, free tuition was given by Eddie on how to make the best of your cast and present the fly to the trout as delicately as possible. Correct choice of fly rod, fly reel and weight of fly line all play an important part in making the day of fishing enjoyable. If you can't have fun when you go fishing, you may as well pack it in and take up golf. But let me tell you, losing golf balls can be even more frustrating. While some anglers were keen to learn tips on casting, the more experienced already had that fly in the water. bright blue sky, flat calm and gratefully accepted sunshine are not the best of conditions for trout fly fishing, but at least it allowed everyone to spot the fish swimming in the water. Matt here, Yep. <laughs> onto his first church paddock fish. It's a lovely brownie. Nice brownie, yeah. We changed, changed the speed of retrieve a bit, didn't you? Mm -hmm. And I just let it drop. I stripped it in quite fast, and then yeah. when it came right in, just let it drop, and it had it like without it, any tweaking at all. Yeah, it was, it was good. A really good take. And not I didn't even too know far. It's hooked. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Grab your net. He's kicking. <laughs> Careful, because what I find is they kick even more when they come close to the bank. Yeah. And I've snapped a few off on the leader. Oh, he's trying to get in them reeds. Oh, God, Pull him he's side had... strain, that's he's it. He's right in. Oh, he's coming out, that's it. Give him side strain. Don't give him too much uh, power, because the leader will pop. Yeah. That's it, side strain. So he, he knows those weeds are there. Yeah. That's it, go round to him. Way, oh, well done, buddy. Yeah. But trying to gauge how deep those fish were swimming, and how fast, and even their reaction to your fly, made it a challenging proposition. These trout really had to be fished for correctly if you wanted to get that electrifying hookup. Inside 20 minutes, the guys at Church Paddock had given tips on casting that showed everyone a marked improvement. It just goes to show that correct instruction is paramount in trying to fly fish. I have to be honest, I didn't even pick up a fly rod on this day, and that's a rarity indeed for Graham Pullen. But I wanted to capture the day's event with a camera. And to be honest, there's nothing more satisfying than putting an angler on a tip or a technique 
then see their face light up as that fly line pulls tight and they feel the trout twisting and turning at the other end. What was that caught on? I was on a damselfly. So he swam, saw the fly first of all and uh, didn't like the look of it and uh, turned away so I cast in the direction he was going and uh, yeah, he, he just nobbled it. That about a nice fish, six yeah. Inches, yeah. Look at the tail on that, it's a really full-tailed fish. It is, isn't it? big is it? Is it a brown? Maybe a rainbow? Or even the rarer Dameron blue trout? So what was that on, like a buzzer? Yeah, just a traffic light buzzer. I was just speaking to Jamie. It sounded like it took you by surprise. Well, it was. Oh my God, I mean. <laughs> Do you know what it did? Because I found out that I had my reel set up wrong Yes. And I was finding it hard to cast. And he came over and he fixed, fixed the reel. Just let him go. And if instantly I caught a fish. I don't know whether it's made any difference to catch him, but it's easier to cast. It took me by surprise. Watch those overhangs there. So if I was, I'd stick with that, probably if you get that one in, I'd save with the fly. If, if you get one take, because they're just, just nipping at it. I've yeah. been watching them through the lens. Certainly going well, isn't it? I've just changed fly, actually. I had like a, just a, a little hair's ear on. And I had a couple of trout follow, yeah. but no takes. And I've just changed this little buzzer and instantly. Yeah, I think it's small. I said to the other guys, I think small's going to oh. do it. Yeah, dear. That's, the day. <laughs> That's good. You got a trout there. That's good. I'll tell you what. A scene like this mirrored lake surface, tree reflections, and clear blue sky show just how perfect an English trout setting can be. At times like this, I'm torn between a fishing rod and a camera. Sometimes. I try to do both at the same time, and it ends up well, disastrous. And I finally got our novice fly fisherman into his first trout. I don't know who was more captivated, me, him, or the trout. And, to make it even better, it was a church paddock brown trout. Today, not only did everyone get right into the fishing, but there were personal bests racking up with biggest trout or first catch of a particular species of trout. For me, it was the large number of brown trout taking the fly that made it even more worthwhile to be there with a camera. So, you've caught that fish, your first rainbow. Yeah. Now, what have you learned in the lesson of Totally Awesome Fishing School? Well... Slow, fast, tweaks? Yeah, little tweaks. Um, 
visual, isn't it, really? Yeah, yeah, just waiting for its mouth to open, really. And did um, you see that one, or did you feel him? This was a feel. It took it. You felt away. you felt it pulling yeah, it in, yeah. Pulled it. I think got quite lucky with it hooking itself pretty well there, but. Always know, take good. take luck over skill, I yeah, say. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, a nice one. At this fishery, it's the variety of trout species that makes it so popular with the anglers. Sometimes they even have brook trout. And also the occasional rainbow going up into double figures. But that clear water that lets you see the fish also allows the trout to see everything on the fly and the leader. You need the perfect presentation with the fly, either nymph or buzzer, and keep it on the same horizontal plane as the trout. I always say it needs to be right in his face when you move it, as there are plenty of other insects living in the lush weed growth that the trout won't have to move far to eat. Watch for their response and alter your retrieve until you see them take it, or you feel that electrifying pull on the line that signifies a hookup. So with everyone getting into the trout, we can all relax. The best thing about clear water trout fishing is the entertainment value. Minutes turn rapidly into hours as you stare through the water with polarizing glasses watching those fish cruise around. And when you start targeting a big trout it can be all consuming. It makes you start thinking like a fish and of course that really is the success route for this type of fly fishing. Church Paddock has a wood-built fishing hut where you can chill out between fish with snacks and drinks available, plus an open decking area overlooking the lake. And Eddie was on hand in the kitchen to cook up lunch. I have to say the Cajun rainbow trout was probably the best cooked trout I have ever had. Sun, drought, good food, and a view over that lake meant all our totally awesome competition winners could relax over lunch. Swap a few fishing yarns and talk about what fly they thought the drought would take next. And a local expert Dick was on hand to give an instruction on tying some of the fly patterns. The first three patterns are, what do you mean the first? The three patterns. Can you see that? Yeah, I've got them. Yeah. Shrimp, damsel, and cat's whisker. That's the three different types of wet fly that I find work here on still waters. And that's for consistency. You can rotate through those three all year round. Yes, yes, that's right. Um, the shrimp works best in the autumn when there's a lot of weed in the lakes and the, the density, the population of shrimp must get enormous around August, September time. Um, but there's shrimp in the water all the time and the, the fish, particularly the resident fish, the, yeah. the, um, the brownies, they will always uh, be susceptible to a shrimp. Gotcha. I've had four takes on a shrimp this morning. I've only caught one fish. Yep. But I got four takes on shrimp. Now the damsel also, damsel nymphs are in the water all the time. And the cat's whisker, that well, that represents a fish. Sure. That represents um, a small roach, a fry, or food, in inverted commas. Yeah, so are there uh, some coarse fish fry in here? There going to be some other... No, well, interestingly, I think that the only fry in here, as far as I know, are uh, sticklebacks. Yes. But the, the trout, um, the trout still go for something flashy, uh, waggling through the water uh, that attracts them. All we know is that it catches fish on a regular, consistent well, basis. 
That's the main um, thing. So uh, I'll start with the I'll start with the cat's whisker because it's nice and big, and you can all see that. Yeah. A size eight long shank hook, quite a big hook there, and it's got a gold bead on it, a gold head, and that provides it with with uh, some weight to get it down. Now is that a tungsten head or a brass one? Because somebody it, that's yesterday not told a tungsten me tungsten head. Tungsten heads cost thirty p yeah. each. Oh my god. Uh, that's me out. <laughs> Uh, that's an ordinary gold head, no expensive enough. Um, you, you can use an ordinary bead if you like. Or in fact, you, or, or, um, the original um, cat's whisker had a lead head back in the 70s when the cat's whisker fly was invented. Uh, but you can use any head, I choose to use the gold head. Fly tying can be an immensely satisfying hobby. Ideal for those long winter nights when the wind rattles the window panes and the rain is drumming on the door. It can pass hours, and well, it can even get a bit of an obsession. There are lots of fly ties around that put the art of creating that perfect fly pattern almost as high as catching the trout itself. I did a lot of fly tying in my early years and invented a pattern that was hugely successful called the Black Aggravator. It even made it into the fishing press. So ended our totally awesome fishing show competition winners trip. They caught brown trout, they caught rainbow trout, they even caught the Dameron blue trout. Was it all worth the effort? You judge for yourself by the bent rods and happy faces. It was fly fishing for trout on a perfect day.